now that I'm here. Um, let me just ask uh, each question one at a time. We'll see how this is from previous week. Uh, we'll see how ChatGPT responds, and then I will critique its answers. So very first question, uh, this is from your textbook, why one two small sodium lamps uh, produce an interference pattern. Okay, let's uh, ask that question of ChatGPT and let's see what it says. Yeah, so it's getting the major point, uh, the main point, which is the one about the coherence. So uh, lamps, incandescent and light or sodium lamps, uh, like arc lamps, they are not going to produce coherent light. So um, when you, so in your textbook, you've seen diagrams of the double slit interference where there's a single slit first and single slit first and then the double slit. And the purpose of the single slit is to pick out a small portion so that uh, everything after that can be considered to be coherent. Like everything is coherent with itself. And uh, when you have two independent light sources, that's going to be the main question. Will two independent light sources be coherent with each other? And small uh, sodium lamps, incandescent light, they won't be uh, coherent with each other. There won't be stable phase relationship. Um, phases especially won't be um, similar to each other. The wavelength is you can, uh, sodium lamp is monochromatic enough, you know, it's producing monochromatic light of that. Um, with the uh, laser pointers, I, I think it did get the intended answer, which is that lasers uh, produce coherent light. I have a lecture watch it. Um, so um, two lasers can have a stable phase relationship with each other. So they can st produce a stable interference pattern. Now, one thing I got to tell you with the laser pointers, um, don't be too surprised if you got two laser pointers and actually overlap them. And if you don't see any stable interference pattern, because actual um, making sure to um, two independent lasers are uh, coherent, actually maintains a stable phase relationship with each other. It takes a lot of work. So, um, uh, but you can kind of imagine an ideal scenario where it's not actually laser pointers, but maybe, you know, um, very stable uh, uh, dye laser, <laughs> dye laser in a lab where it's a frequency stabilized and all that stuff. Uh, in the case, you can actually produce interference pattern from two lasers that are independent light sources. So yeah, this is mostly correct answer. Um, so at least giving the intended answer that's expected at this lower division class, not a you know AM or physics research seminar. <laughs> So this is the second question. Why is monochromatic light used? Yeah. Uh, I think it's going a little bit overboard. So uh, same frequency, okay, good. Same phase, um, yeah. Um, I will tell you that phase and polarization, um, so the one setup in your interference pattern that will cure any defects in your light source is going to be this thing. Let me go to the textbook and show you what I mean. In your textbook's description of the double slit interference setup, it will produce, it will include this uh, single slit. And as I was saying, in the function of this, this single slit is that you are taking that tiny portion of the light so that this tiny portion will be consistent with itself when it comes to phase and even polarization. What it necessarily want and sure happens is that all the light that goes through has the same frequency, same wavelength. So that's why it's taken care of over here. Your instant light is monochromatic to start. So Church pit is going a little bit overboard. Monochromatic, all that it ensures is that it has same frequency. Phase and uh, polarization, 
It doesn't, it can't, and it doesn't have to with the typical setup of there being this kind of filter that ensures that all the light that's reaching the double slit comes from the same point. So it's, uh, you know, has the same phase with itself, has the same uh, polarization with itself. And so with wavelength, um, if you have a white light, what, what would happen if white white were used? If a white light were used, then there are many different colors. So for e effectively, there's not a um, there's not a um, well-defined wavelength for the light. And what is it saying? Different colors of light would they interfere with each other. Now, uh, come, uh, I guess that's fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can think of it as uh, there's an interference pattern for one color. For red, for example, there's a slightly different interference pattern for blue, and you imagine all of them overlapping with, with each other. So in setups like uh, diffraction grading, which you will see soon, I think next week, um, that will actually produce a rainbow pattern um, with what you might expect to see, something like a double solid interference. Um, these interference patterns are not too sharp to start with, so you'll just... Uh, uh, I'm not sure what you will see. You might see be able to see rainbow colors in some setup. Sometimes it might be just something that's smeared out. And uh, with overlap and inter yeah, difficult to predict or interpret, yeah. So to clear in order to produce clear pattern, yeah, you do need to use monochromatic light. So I, I guess this is for the most part correct, other than having these overwrought um, details. And I cannot tell you this is kind of um, uh, signature of ChatGPT. It'll give you some. It'll give you super detailed answer where some of the details is kind of wrong. Um, it's you know either overly specific or unnecessary. It's not something that I would expect as an actual expert in physics to include in their answer because it's not actually right. <laughs> um, and you know the tendency with the students tend to be where uh, if you're not sure you leave it out right. With the chat GPT, when it's not sure, it will just make up facts. <laughs> so, okay, I asked the question, how is the difference in paths taken by two originally in phase light waves? Yeah, that would be like um, in this setup. Um, so because it, light arriving at these two points are coming from the same um, spot, as they are arriving, they are in phase here. Uh, when they are leaving these two slits, they are in phase. And on different spots here, they would be either in phase, out of phase, or something in between. Um, whether they interfere constructively or destructively, how can this be reflection by refraction? Okay, let's read through it. Uh, difference in yeah, difference in path lengths between determines whether they okay. When the path length different two ways is equal to yeah, that that's what we talk about in the double slit interference and the path all the inter <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's mixing up two things. So, so this is definitely wrong, and I will tell you the two different things that it's mixing up. So, um, so it's the first part of the answers, right? So let's just start from there. If a path length difference is integer times wavelength then that would lead to constructive interference. So for destructive, what do you need? That's the question. So for destructive, you need something in between. You need the one where when one wave is going up, the other wave is going down. So your path length difference for something like that should be in between integers. So, you know, uh, um, half integer, n plus one half times lambda. That's what you need. So it's kind of getting that, um, you know, integer plus half. And what it doesn't need is it. you don't need all the integer. You just need the integer plus half. And I can kind of guess where this odd integer is coming from, why it's doing this. Because this uh, interference condition, it can be expressed in terms of wavelength. That's a possibility. And that's what we are doing here. But very often in practice, we actually express it in terms of not wavelength, but phase. So this uh, path length uh, relationship 
translates it into a phase difference relationship. And that phase difference relationship for constructive means uh, 2 pi times 2 pi, no, it means pi times uh, uh, even integer. So two times n, for example, it's basically this um, this coefficient times two pi. That's what, yeah, times two pi. That's what it is. With the destructive interference, the phase relationship, you know, this coefficient here times two pi will give you pi times um, two times I'm gonna use n plus one. So an odd integer times pi. That's gonna be the phase relationship for destructive. So, um, so this uh, portion of the answer is that we are the mixture <laughs> of those two, and the way it's mixed, it's wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, there must be something in its a training text that has this probably a tutor on check or giving on the wrong answer. <laughs> so okay, um, I'm glad the chat GPT got something wrong for once. <laughs> Let's keep going. Uh, so yeah. So with that. Uh, part to correct it. Reflection and refraction can affect the path difference. It doesn't affect the path difference. It affects the phase difference between two waves and thus and through affecting the phase. So not path, but through affecting the phase difference, um, it affects interference pattern. So. Uh, yeah, I think this is all nonsense. Um, I mean, it's, you know, no. grammatical and some, it might make sense, but it has nothing to do with actually answering the question. Um, so, yeah. So, so the rest of the answer is wrong. So um, the chat GPT answer here is kind of maybe a C kind of answer. So with respect to reflection, let me just show you the textbook section where the relevant uh, um, details are introduced. So uh, you can get the get them in the thin film interference because that's where really reflection and refraction happens and you can get things that impact it. So with the reflection, some air, yeah, changes in phase due to reflection. And depending on certain conditions, you could get 180 degree or pi phase shift. So that pi phase shift will uh, impact whether at the very end it um, you have constructive or destructive phase difference. So that's uh, how reflection can impact it. And with the refraction, ChatGPT for whatever reason it's uh, over focusing on these angles. Um, and oh wait, um, no. Um, here, okay, in refraction, the path of difference depending. Yeah, so the angle portion is irrelevant. In fact, the way we do the analysis, uh, in most cases, we will assume that it's kind of a close to the normal incidence. So, so like, you know, they're drawing these exaggerated angles, but when you look at the actual algebraic expressions they write down in places where we do the analysis, we'll basically do the analysis assuming these are pretty close to the normal. That's why it says, says angles show larger than actual, because we are going to be treating it like it's normal instance. So when it comes to refraction, the angle of refraction doesn't really matter. We are going to treat it as if it's coming straight down and going straight up and going straight through. Uh, what does matter is, yeah, as a pass, it's a speed changes. Ah, but yeah, 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 wave front bending again. Not relevant to most of the situations still. What the speed different change uh, impacts though is the it impacts the wavelength in medium. So the change in the wavelength will change the how much phase uh, change occurs as it goes through the medium. And I think your textbook somewhere here. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, it works through this index or refraction in the medium. So look through some of the examples that hopefully will help. Um, so it's um, this question is getting at those details. And, um, and yeah, um, let's see, refraction. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's what it's asking for. So, 
so chat gpt got it right up until here and the rest of it is wrong <laughs> uh, so do your best and uh and, and you know you shouldn't use chat GPT. <laughs> look at the model answers um uh, yeah, all these are pointed out finally i have a sense that uh aside from actually trying it uh before that chat gpt is gonna get this wrong and this is i gotta tell you it's a, it is a kind of a difficult to question in that um you know, it's uh, um, um, it's difficult in the sense that I'm actually asking you to give me a wrong answer. That's wrong in a very specific way, <laughs> uh, because you know, um, to handle Newton's rings with how your textbook handles it, you know, like a thin film interference. That's the correct physical answer, and that's a, if someone asks you to explain Newton's rings, that's how you should answer it. Um, but I'm not looking for that answer because here I'm looking for a very specific type of historical incorrect answer. Um, it's debate between proponents of uh, uh, What is interesting here is that Newton was a proponent of particle theory of light, corpuscular theory of light, and yet he is credited with Newton's rings, which we explain using wave uh, feature of light. So it um, the, this is the key question. How did Newton explain this experimental phenomenon that he analyzed and is credited for that would be naturally explained through the wave nature of light, not particle nature of light? So, ChatGPT answers this time. Let's see. Uh, in terms of the corpuscular theory of light, tiny, these corpuscles were thought to interact by bouncing. Yeah, okay, okay. That's uh, the description of the corpuscular theory, not incorrect. In the case of Newton's rings experiment, Newton and I were bent as they passed. Yeah, he's describing refraction, which can be exp explained with a corpuscular theory, but that has nothing to do with the interference, because interference is a wave phenomena. Bending doesn't cause interference, and I think uh, basically Bend at different angle. Yeah, uh, ChatGPT is just a hallucinating fact. This is not what it described. Um, so, I guess uh, I have a. So, <laughs> again, this is a challenging question because I'm looking for a very particular type of wrong answer. Let me give this a try. So, um, ChatGPT's main competitor is Google. So, let me try Google search. Let's see what Google search gives me. I'm just going to search for this. And you can see that I've actually done a little bit of this before. <laughs> and I'll explain my previous search before. How did the Newton explain the... Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. This uh, sounds like the question. How did the Newton explain his interference rings without... Wait. Yeah, yeah. So let's look at that. And, you know, whenever you use outside the sources like Internet Forum, you do have to be careful that the answers could be totally wrong. Buyer, <laughs> beware. Um, so interference rings without wave optics. That is the key part of this question. Uh, yeah. How did it explain? And let's see. There's one answer. Yeah. Thin plates. Or, yeah, yeah. Other people, um, them as Newton's rings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Newton did uh, you know that all that on continuity he considered potential the wave theories although he presented wave the hypothetical yeah because uh, yeah he did this is important but he was trying to accommodate the partial reflection and refraction um, and then he yeah this is the keyword he's he has uh, some sort of a theory of fit um, something about how this uh, probability of ref, uh, reflection changes. <laughs> I can't tell you that I fully understand it. And, you know, this is kind of, um, this is more about history of science. Because Newton's corpuscular theory, one thing I should tell you is that they are wrong. So I don't want to focus too much, spend too much time on what is known to be wrong theory. Um, but, so... I think the place where I first heard about this Newton's theory of fit, like with a lot of um, 
things that I physics knowledge that I know and at some point I forget where did I learn that from I think I learned it from one of the Feynman lectures that's why I searched for Feynman theory of fit and at first I thought it was in the Feynman lectures but I don't think uh, it's there it uh, it must have been the Feynman has a um, uh, he, he has a, a, like a, a book for uh, a lay people, book for non-physics majors, that's called the QED, and he's just trying to give a description of quantum, the theory of quantum electrodynamics uh, for, in a way that's uh, suitable for people who are not trained in physics, and here he describes the Newton's theory of it, and he's describing how Newton uh, tried to analyze this without um, using... Uh, 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 wave theory of light. So, if you're interested, watch one of these. So Feynman is a, a really wonderful explainer of physics. Uh, is uh, no one does it quite the same way he did it. He does it. He did it. Um, which is that um, explain physics in a way that's accessible to people who um, who are new to the subject. So it doesn't use super. Um, he doesn't use super sophisticated mathematics. And at the same time, he's not watering down physics because a lot of modern physics explainers, uh, like one particular one I don't like that I won't say the name out loud, they water down the physics so much that what they explain, explain ends up not being physics at all. And uh, you will pointedly not see any of those in my class because I... So like whenever I use any of the videos, I review those before I share them and ones where I can see that they've watered down physics, so what they're describing isn't physics anymore. I don't use those in my class. So anyway, so this is a kind of difficult question uh, to get the correct answer because I'm looking for a very specific answer that's uh, actually wrong answer physically, but correct answer historically. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I guess the uh, chat GPT did, I don't know, B maybe. So this one answered completely incorrectly, kind of. This one, it was incorrect, but I gotta tell you, almost no student to get say it right because it's hard. Um, and the other two are okay. Yeah. 